<laughs> Only this is no time for laughter. The season is over, and as the whole world prepares for the greatest football party of them all, we must contemplate the ultimate disaster. Rangers won nothing. <laughs> but there is no time to waste deliberating, pontificating, or procrastinating over why God, in his infinite wisdom, allowed Strachan to steal the SPL title from its rightful place on David Murray's magnificent mantelpiece. Or, less importantly, Scotland's abysmal showing in the qualifying rounds. Joining us in the studio tonight, the very best of Scottish football's literary loudmouths, big heads and smart arses. Tonight, we will ask the questions that need to be asked. Why are we not at the finals? Will we ever be there again? Who can we string up for this scunnering fact? Let's get this lively debate underway with the legend that is Dennis Law. Well, you know, as I say, Chico, for me, it's all about the players. The players who play in the pitch. That's what makes the difference, you know? The players. And over the years, although we have had the players, we have never had the, the team in which the players could play. Now, what do I mean by that, eh? No? It's gone. So, Dennis, what you're saying is... Oh, I'm sorry, I haven't got scooby what you're on about. Fantastic! You can't beat it! The Perth Pack and the Mental Shimmy! The Fool to the Brimmy! The See You Jimmy! The Gimme, Gimme, Gimme a Man After Midnight! The Abba Crew! The Yubba Dubba Doo! The We Support the Boys in Blue! So, to get to the point, the Sunday Joint! The Albert Pier Point! The hangman's noose, the moose loose about this hoose. Stuart, we'll get right back to you. Ken Dogleash, did you want to come in there? No. <laughs> this is going great, isn't it? We'll be right back. What the f... Some folk will be coming to Germany to see the Argentinians, or the Italians, or the French. Me? I came to check out the Poles. <laughs> When you see the quality that has reached the finals this year, your Angolos, your Togas, your Trinidad, your Tobagos, that's four countries alone <laughs> that Scotland should be better than. I have with me now Walter Smith and Tommy Burns. Walter, Tommy, the World Cup finals, we wanted to be there, but we won't be. How does it feel not to be where you aren't when all the time you wanted to be there in the first place? And more importantly, whose fault is it? Well... Obviously, you know, when I took over, we still had, them. at that present moment, a, a chance of qualification. So I felt it would have been, it would have been wrong to blame Bertie Votes. But then once it sank in that we wouldn't be going, I'd I change my mind and <laughs> now I blame him for everything. Looking back, with the benefit of hindsight and in retrospect, would you have done anything differently from how you didn't do it in the first place? Well, you know, maybe we didn't get our tactics absolutely right in every game. Yeah, and despite me drumming it into them, uh, I don't think all the players were, were saying their prayers every night. <laughs> I also know for a fact that some of the squad were passing around literature that, uh, that corrupts the soul. Razzle? Fiesta? Knave? Yeah, the Da Vinci Code. <laughs> Finally, there can be no doubt that the nation is so disappointed not to have made it to the World Cup finals. However, we have got the European Championship qualifying group to look forward to. How do you see our chances in that? Hopeless. I mean... <laughs> what makes the Tartan army so unique? What makes them follow Scotland everywhere? What makes the only folk that can be bothered with the Tartan army folk that are in the Tartan army? What makes the Tartan army get on my tits? <laughs> To find out more, I have come here to this picture-skew Ayrshire village of Kiltadja, Tartan <laughs> Army Regional HQ, to get to the bottom of the root of the whole of the part of this phenomenally drum.
Don't stop fanning a boot and cut to the cheese. Deep down, what's this really all about? Well, I suppose it's no just about football. Another reason I do it is because I'm very proud of my nation and I want to spread the culture of Scotland. Aye, and for me, it's, it's also about visiting interesting and foreign lands and moaning about the price of the beer. I just love lifting up my kilt and flashing my tackle. <laughs> Uh, and uh, I noticed there is a, a young lady in your midst. Uh, tell me, uh, are you a genuine football fan or just the local bun? Well, Bob, I've shagged this lot for starters. <laughs> Thank you, Hen. Too much information. Yes, quite there. And some news just in, cheers, Ted. A company in Lancashire has developed a pack containing authentic smells for football fans to help make watching the World Cup on television more realistic. The pack includes the smell of grass, the aroma of halftime pies, and, of course, the unmistakable whiff of shite for when the English commentators start going on about 1966. <laughs> Well, you know, to be honest, you know, I feel we put ourselves under intolerable pressure ever since 1966, yeah, you know. In case you didn't know, something happened in 1966 that had a, had a profound effect on, on every Scotsman. Francis Chichester became the first man to <laughs> circumnavigate the globe without a stopover. And that's a hell of a long journey without going to the tournament. Huh? Home second former defence leader half, Dr John Reed here. Reed's out to my mates. And today, I'm here to present the official government guide to help all you English football hooligans start trouble in Germany. Personally, I never go abroad unless tooled up with a bleedo and or claw hammer <laughs> secreted about my person. But for the kicking off of the full-scale riot in a peaceful town square, you can't beat the old cafe chair lobbed onto some innocent bystander's head. <laughs> this tried and trusted way to get a rammy going has been... <coughs> Sorry, yeah. Uh, oh, that's uh, Tony Blair and my Moby. By the way, secretly, he likes the Selic nearly as much as me. <laughs> Gaffa! Aye? Aye? Oh, oh, right, right, I see. Got you. Aye. <clears throat> Sorry about that. We misunderstanding. Apparently, I'm supposed to be telling you how to avoid trouble, <laughs> know who to start it. What a bummer. So, just say no to the blado. Leave the baseball bat at him. After all, it's the World Cup. Know the World Series. When in sausage muncherland, don't dare basil faulty and start talking about the war. Don't make chicken noises to the Italians. Don't call the French frogs, the Argies dagos, or the Yanks wanks. Don't ask any South Koreans if they fancy a hot dog. Don't say to any Japs, there's a nip in the air. And as for the Iranians, don't be trying to start a war with them. That's the gaffer's job. <laughs> Capiche? <laughs> Under 30 votes, you saw the problem. We were losing too many games, and one of the reasons we were losing too many games was because we were playing too many games. So, by not making the World Cup finals, that's three matches we've managed to avoid defeating. It's <laughs> an achievement in itself. Hi, Jim White here. Welcome back. Well, Chicks away having a wee lie down at the moment and I'm amongst the fans in the studio and we've got a few concerned looking coupons here. At you, sir, uh, there's a World Cup finals coming up. Scotland haven't qualified. Pish, isn't it? Well, Jim, I'd actually like to expand on that. But I'm sure you would, but uh, no offence, mate. You've just got one of those whiny voices. I just can't be arsed listening to it. <laughs> and uh, what about you, mate? Uh, no one's been apportioning blame at all to Bertie Votes, but it's... It's his fault, isn't it? Well, I don't think you can simply blame Bertie Votes because... No, no, that's true. Walter, nine in a row Smith, did take up the reins. And like Bertie, he had Tommy Burns as his right-hand man. So, Tommy, if you're listening, mate, you're a jinx. <laughs> and, and what about you? 
Ah, forget it. Uh, <laughs> Charlie Knight, the fans of it there say, what do the experts think? James, they've hit the nail by its horns. <laughs> Scotland never seems like a fair crack of the cake. And I know it seems childish, but here we are again. A big tournament coming up, and we are left with our faces tripping us, asking, where is our slice of the whip? Yep, um, yep. OK, put it this way, bud. I feel for the fans, I really do. But I'm telling you, this would never happen in Germany. Never happen. If Scotland were Germany, then we would have qualified. And that way, Scottish fans would be happy. Although, technically, they would have to become Germans, like myself. <laughs> to be honest, Jim, we have some quality players, but they, they don't have the quality of quality required right now. So for Scotland in its current state, qualification is just a big ask too far. Tough talking, Davy. OK, well, maybe we're too close to all and we can't see the wood for the trees. Maybe we need the benefit of someone on the outside looking in. And maybe we have that someone right now in our New Jersey studios. The Scotland Rangers, Watford, Nantes, Hearts, Falkirk, Party Thistle legend and Celtic player... Morris Johnson. Hi, Jim. Cheers, Morris. What a character. Well, Mo, the lads are lining up to speak to you, so let's go. Morris, worldwise, in a tactical sense, is there a difference between what we play over here and what you play over there? Well, well yeah, Charlie, uh, very much so. In America, it's called soccer. Well, in Scotland, I believe you call it football. Cheers. Great point, Morris. I never thought of that. Mojo, it's Big Rambo here. How you doing, bud? Just wanted to ask, in terms of football progression, you went to France, I went to Germany. As far as places to develop your career go, do you see any similarities? Well, yeah, I, I think France and Germany are similar because in, in, in both countries, the language they speak is foreign. <laughs> David Proven here, Morris. And I'm just wondering, after all this time, do you still get lots of hassle from Celtic fans? Well, to be honest, Davey, yeah, I do. Good. <laughs> what do you make of that? Catch you later, mate. <laughs> Frankfurt. Famous for the big sausage known as the Frankfurter. <laughs> Milton. Famous for the big sausage known as the Frankie Boy Fucker. <laughs> it has been suggested that national anthems should no longer be played before football games. This suits Scotland because there is a lot of confusion as to what our national anthem actually is. During the 70s, it was God Save the Queen. In the 80s, it was Scotland the Brave. In the 90s, it was Flower of Scotland. And during the Bertie Votes era, it was we are shite, and we know we are. <laughs> if you could pick one national anthem, what would you have pocked? We think that as a, a, a modern, young, forward-thinking nation, we'd have a young, modern, forward-thinking anthem, so we would go for 500 miles. You're taking the piss. <laughs> No, we want to be taken seriously on the subject of the national anthem. Really? Well, going na 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 will certainly do that. Almost <laughs> as much as going do a dear. Go and tell me, what's a song out of the sound of music got to do with football? Well, listen, it's just to demonstrate the indomitable spirit of the Scottish people. It's just to, to show that no matter what, the party goes on. Absolutely, Bob. This is our history. It's in our blood. We carry the genes of the Wallace and the Bruce right. and... and... The Crankies. <laughs> You're listening to the mother of all talk shows with me, gorgeous George Galloway. <laughs> Give me a call if you would like me to put all the country's political problems to right. If you would be interested in hearing my solutions to all the world's ills, or if you would like me just to be uh, the cat. <laughs> Line one, you were talking about the World Cup before I interrupted you so that I could talk about me. You may now carry on. 
Well, I was just saying, George, let's be honest. In World Cup terms, Scotland are a joke. We don't even deserve to be in the World Cup. Go on. I say, thank God we didn't qualify for the World Cup finals. Thank God we have been spared the humiliation of being slaughtered by teams who just a few years back weren't fit to lace our boots. And whose fault do you think this mess is? Well, it's the fault of the teams, the players, the management, Hamden Park, the SPL, the SFL, the fans' agents, school kids... The gym teachers! Uh, but surely the, the, the governing body must accept some of the blame for the demise of Scotland as a football nation. I totally refute that. OK, I'll, I'll have to stop you there. We'll be back after the break with more from the SFA chief executive, uh, David Taylor. <laughs> the Commonwealth Games in Melbourne were a huge success for Scotland in that for once we didn't make total arses of ourselves <laughs> and even won hunters of medals as well. So pure chuffed were the authorities by this success that moves were quickly afoot to bring the 2014 Commonwealth Games to Glasgow, followed by rumours of another bid for the European Championships in 2016. So how realistic is this bid and how would it affect Scotland's standing in world football? I, the First Minister, along with many of my subjects, was not only impressed, but also inspired by Team Scotland's success at this year's Commonwealth Games. And why do you think Team Scotland were so successful? Probably because most of them were really English. First Minister, no one's denying that Melbourne was a success, but isn't there a danger of us getting slightly carried away here? After all, this wasn't the Olympics. This was the Commonwealth Games, the wee diddy version. Yes. But surely we have to be realistic. The Commonwealth Games is perfect for us because, as I have said many times, Scotland is the best we diddy country in the world. <laughs> Given that the joint Scottish-Ireland bid failed, why do you think an individual Scottish bid for the European Championships could be successful? Well, last time we pulled out all the stops, but now I realise that the delegation wearing ill-fitting kilts and a piper sometimes just isn't enough. However, we have learned a lot since then, thanks to Tartan Week. And do you think the Tartan Week approach will work for the European Championships? The foreign punters just love watching the cream of Scotland's Z-list celebrities and political non-entities strut their stuff on the catwalk. The last one there was like a who's who. Honestly, the audience were sitting there going, who is that? Who are they? Who is this? But what about the logistical nightmare that a successful European Championship bid would create? To avoid answering any of these questions, I have with me now Justice Ministerette Cathy Jimison. And Mrs Jimison... Please, please, Anne. Call me wee Cathy. OK. Wee Cathy. If the bid were to be successful, what measures will you be taking to make Scotland safer for visitors? Well, Hen, wait, wait. Sorry, sorry. What's your name again? Rona. Right, well, Rona Hen, when we Jack first phoned me up about this, I was in TK Maxx trying on a trouser suit, and I said to him, Jack, Jack, you'll have to phone me back. I'm stood in here in my tights with my gusset showing. So when he did, I'd take think about it. And I had decided against the trouser suit at TK Maxx and went for the one in Primark instead. <laughs> there he goes, no, that decision, the one about making Scotland safe for the foreigners. So I says, well, Maybe, maybe they could use a 40 of your Bridget to scare any bad people because she, she's scary, so she is. She's like, she's like that Annabelle Lecter. And, and I was thinking we could come up with a poster with Bridget's scooping on it. And maybe, maybe a slogan. Slogan saying something like, hey, if you want to stay safe in Scotland, don't look at this woman the wrong way. Do you feel that... I'll tell you the truth here, I, I don't know how you Jack's bothering about whether we get this tournament or no, because he's never here anyway. He spends his New Year's at Kirsty Watts Villa, his Easter's in New York, and the Glasgow Fair in some Chukter Island been ethnic. We, oui, Cathy... Thank you. That's finished? Yes. Could you just ask you to run a hen? Put you get that top? So for nice. <laughs> <laughs> of all the German tunes, my favourite has to be Hamburg, because it's famous for Kevin Keegan and his curly hair. And I'm a big fan of curly hairs. But also, because it just so happens to be the dirty capital of the world. Honest to God, man. See doing Don Reaper, man. 
Lady Poof's winching, with no pantsers on or nothing. Talk about Oberstonen band for us. It was like having the guns of Navarone in my trousers. <laughs> I'm joined now by the terrible enfant de football himself, Eric Cantona. <laughs> Ooh ah! Stella Artois! Shangri La! Ooh la la! Le Perth Pack Elemental Shimmy! Eric, bonjour! Bonjour. Like moi, you have a reputation as a football intellectual. Is that because you have a degree in philosophical ethics from the Sorbonne? No. It is because I have a beard, uh, mon barbe, the, the hair goes forth like the troller chasing the sardines. <laughs> it is scratchy like the, the needle on the records of the hip-hop DJ. It catches soup like a jerky in an alley. <laughs> Let's move on to football. Ah, uh, football. Albert Camus said, uh, all that I know most surely about morality and obligations I owe to football. And another great thinker said, uh, football is a banal, ugly sideshow where the ignorant mollifies the brainless. Who was that? Jean-Paul Sartre? Jerry McNee. <laughs> Eric, this World Cup, like every other one, it's all about Brazil, isn't it? Oh, uh, yes, Brazil is not so much a country as a, a melting pot of culture and creed, uh, dancing to a samba rhythm as through artistry it tries to, tries to forget the painful past of the country's formation and the, the painful present of the, of the shanty towns, the violence and, and police corruption. Ah! Believe me, the, the greatest art comes from pain and suffering. Pain and suffering, you can't beat it. But I don't really want to talk about watching Scotland, so moving on. Eric, you're involved in a sportswear campaign. The Joga Bonita, the Crunchy Rivita, the Coronation Streets Rita, the Donald Meat in the Pita. What's the Hamden roar with that? So, OK, so I am with uh, Nike, uh, endorsing the beautiful side of football. I, I always played football the beautiful way. I always make a, a beautiful shape, uh, even when I was booting a fan in the head. <laughs> Ronaldinho, I like this kid. Talent-wise, he has been touched by God in spades. Looks-wise, he has definitely been scalped Big time by the ugly stick. <laughs> it's an expensive business, this following Scotland. Who do you use, manager? Well, unfortunately, due to an industrial accident that wasn't my fault, I'm not as mobile as I used to be and therefore can't work. But due to the payout and the benefits I received, I'm in the fortunate position of being able to follow my country. I, you know, most of us have had a similar experience to that. Aye. Well, hold on. Have a wee surprise for you. Have a swatch at that television there. The place is surrounded. You thought this was an only an excuse investigation to the state of our football, but it's actually our frontline Scotland sting for sponging bastards. Welcome back. In 1999, under Craig Brown, Scotland achieved their highest ever FIFA World ranking of 21st after beating teams like Austria, England and Germany. In 2006, having now failed to qualify for four consecutive tournaments, Scotland has officially crossed the Diddy line. <laughs> so, Alex Ferguson, as a former Scottish manager, how does that make you feel? Well, you know, how do you think? I'm not proud. Not proud at all that Scotland are now below the, 
the official FIFA diddy line. <laughs> Obviously, this calls for a radical rethink of whatever it is that's needing radically rethunk. For starters, <laughs> what would you do? Well, you know, we've got to get, we've got to get back to grassroots. Getting back to grassroots is, is crucial. <laughs> then I think we need to, to cast a wider net. We need, to, we need to try and increase the catchment area for potential players and <laughs> not just concentrate in the central belts. You mean looking at the borders, the highlands, the Western Isles? Well, you know, actually, I was thinking more like Spain, Italy <laughs> and Brazil. I'll tell you one thing, though. While we're waiting for our football to improve, we're going to have to be a, a lot more ruthless. And I know it maybe goes against the principles of fair play, but maybe we should think about trying to psych out some of the teams above us. And how would you do that? Oh, you know, it's nothing too serious. Maybe just infect them with some sort of super virus. <laughs> Drop a few dead swans in them. That's just slow them down a wee bit. Who will I be supporting in the World Cup? Well, hen, who else could it be? I'll be supporting IKEA, because they did some lovely soft furnishings through the day. I got a lovely poofy there last week. But mm. IKEA's not a country. Are you daft, Ted? I it is. There's, there's North Ikea and South Ikea. They're right across the roof of Japan. That's not Ikea, that's Korea. <laughs> but my lake. <laughs> OK, then. Costco Rica. Mm. My pal May Wallace has got a car for them. You can sell a fortune so you can. No, it's Costa Rica, not Costco Rica. She's so OK. No, all right, I'll be supporting Angola. Mm. You see my other pal Grace Devon, she's, she's got a lovely sweater made out of Angola. Which, see, no matter how many times she wears it, always comes up brand new, so it does, Hen. That's... Angora, not Angola. Oh, is it? Oh, OK, then. Well, I've got it. Well, I'm, supp I'm supporting the country that has made my lifestyle what it is today. Who's that, then? The Profit Czech Republic. <laughs> this is Bob Whaley reporting Scotland. <laughs> like a knob, only we are. <laughs>